Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we are discussing one of the rarest and most exquisite versions of the second-generation Vacheron Constantin Overseas Chronograph. 42.5 millimeters in diameter in yellow gold full bracelet. This silver dialed wonder measures a relatively compact 12.8 millimeters thick and from lug to lug 50.9 millimeters with nicely curved lug profiles and a bracelet that pulls straight down out of its pivoted lug junction. Meaning this is a watch that's actually fairly easy to wear on a smaller wrist in spite of its size and its incredible mass and it is massive. This is a watch that easily wears on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. Plenty of clearance on each side. You can see the watch doesn't come anywhere near the edge of my wrist. You can also see that the watch sits low enough, especially with its sloped bezel, it will slide underneath the dress cuff. This is a sports watch that can also be your dress watch. The timepiece is nicely balanced top to bottom thanks to the heft of the bracelet and the clasp. It doesn't have the top heavy feel of some imbalanced gold watches. You'll also note that the quality of the bracelet on the Overseas 2 probably was the all-time high watermark for the series. While the original bracelet from 96 was more intricate in design, it was also more fiddly and prone to kinking. The third generation bracelet has more toys built in with the micro adjust and the quick release, but it doesn't feel as solid. This, for me, was the high watermark, the all-time best achieved by Vacheron with a bracelet. Now, as you can see, it tapers nicely. It's polished on its outer faces. It has a lovely rolled bevel from the satin finished hoods to the flanks. You can see that there's that repeating Maltese cross motif internally at the pivots, and also that the interior facets of the links are black polished. Very impressive. Satin finish down the primary links all the way down to the buckle itself, which you can see is substantial. It actually has Maltese cross motif triggers. And once you close it, Again, that symbol again. Look at that. You're going to see it throughout this review. There are a lot of cross references on this watch. Note that every single link in the bracelet and that on both sides of the bracelet is removable. There's even a half link built in, so you are guaranteed to find the right size for your wrist. Screw down crowns, screw down pushers. You can see there's a sort of slash cut knurling, another Maltese cross, and the watch is 150 meters water resistant, which is solidly more than you expect from even an anti-magnetic watch, which by ISO 765 is 4,800 ampere per meter anti-magnetic. This is 25,000 ampere per meter anti-magnetic thanks to a solid inner case. So anti-magnetic, 150 meters water resistant and easy to read as the watch features lovely applique yellow gold indices, yellow gold hands, blackened hands for the chronograph seconds and minutes. And then you can see that there are polished chapter rings for each of the sub-registers, and you're going to read the minutes easily because the watch has some calculated asymmetry with this big eye style minutes register. You'll also note that there is a Ray Hot outboard that acts as a seconds and minutes scale, especially for the chronograph. And then you can see there is a sort of sawtooth or herringbone Guilloche cut onto the dial that's very similar to the cut on the knurling of the crowns. Now, if you take a close look, you can see that there is a double digit date with a tiny yellow gold Maltese cross below it, of course, and there is a quick set for that date. Taking a quick look at the bezel and the case, it is impressively hand finished. You can see polished outer faces. There's a lovely transitional bevel that runs the full length of the case on both sides. The lug hoods are satin finished, and if you look closely at the bezel, which is uh -huh, a Maltese cross motif, it features satin recesses and a polished outer face. A tremendous amount of time went into finishing this watch. Taking a quick look at how the bracelet joins with the case, you can see it's screws and bars on both sides. Far more secure and a bit more expensive to make than spring bars, but again, this watch is worth it. Case back, the image of the Italian naval training vessel, Americo Vespucci, said to be the most beautiful sailing ship in the world. I'm not going to argue the point. Several different finishes. You can see polish for the raised and relieved ship and waves. There is a sort of chiseled pattern surrounding the sails. There is a radial satin grain 
emanating around the frame of the ship, and then there is a circumferential concentric satin grain inside the case based on Frederic Piguet 1185, the Vacheron caliber 1137, unidirectional automatic winding, 21 six-beat rate, 37 joules, five-position chronometer style adjustment, 40-hour power reserve, a quick set for the date, and a vertical clutch and column wheel actuation, which means not only does it feel good to operate this column wheel, but because it's a vertical clutch, there's no jump or stagger to the seconds hand when you start it up. Moreover, if you want to just leave the chronograph running so you have your hours, minutes, and seconds at center, the vertical clutch means there is no hazard wear and tear to leaving the chrono running. And finally, because you're wondering, is a Frederic Piquet movement up to the job of powering a Vacheron? It is a beautifully finished and finely regulated thin integrated automatic caliber. It is a high horology movement for a high horology watch. And besides, when you buy this watch, you're paying for this metallurgy, for this finish. That's where the money was spent. Reach out to team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. And we're back with the Overseas Chrono by Night.